It's Maddie Levine back here for MMA Island. We are the new wave of MMA media, and I have a very special guest today. Uh, she's rising up in the ranks at the UFC. She's a little bit of a newbie, but she's certainly not new to the game. And I'm going to let her introduce herself. Welcome, Kay Hansen. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited. I'm super excited, too. It's so nice to meet the superstar that everybody's <laughs> been talking about. Uh, so... <laughs> You know, you're one and one in UFC, but you're certainly not new to this fight game. So tell me a little bit about your background. Um, well, I started training when I was 16. Um, I kind of hit the ground running. Um, and then I made my pro debut with Invicta at 18. Um, I had almost every one of my pro fights there except for one um, before I got to the UFC. And then I made my debut at 20. And now here I am. So um you know I have a fight coming up January 22nd uh, I've been out for about a year now but I'm super excited to, to be back I mean you say it so nonchalantly like I made my debut at 20 <laughs> as if like that's a normal thing I mean <laughs> tell me what's what was going through your head the moment that you made your debut at at such a young age you know it was kind of uh at the moment uh it was hard to kind of take it all in because it was a last minute uh fight um you know, they called me, I think it was a six days notice. Um, they called me on Sunday and I fought on Saturday. So six days notice. Um, so obviously I got all kinds of emotions, but I mean, I got to complete medicals last minute. I got to cut weight last minute. I got to do everything last minute. So, uh, and it was like during COVID times, you know what I mean? So I got COVID tested, we're quarantined. Like, uh, so for me, it was kind of like, uh, overwhelming isn't the word, but it was a lot to process. So for me, uh, it was more of just going through the motion, you know, business as usual. Um, it didn't hit me until like a couple of days after. And I was like, oh shit, like I just made my UC debut. You know what I mean? So it took me a few days to digest it. But once I did, it was, it was pretty cool. Yeah. It's almost like you have to go somewhere else so you can like yeah. really focus. And then you're and like, what, oh shit, that just happened. I think what kind of helped me too was like winning the, the 50K. You know what I mean? I was like, when I like, uh, you don't get that 50K for a couple months after your like drug test clear and everything, but like knowing that I had won the 50k I was just like oh shit like not only did I make my debut but like I got a performance bonus so for me it was just a, a super surreal experience and that was with your new team that you're with now right classic fight team uh no or actually that with, that was, with your other gym yeah that was with my other gym um and then my last fight was my first fight with uh my, my new team and how's the new team going it seems like you are absolutely loving it yeah it's great you know um I feel like I've kind of spent my whole career trying to find uh the perfect mix of people you know what i mean um and it can be hard because i feel like in the fight game there are so many people um but you have to really gel with people you know what i mean to have them in your corner to trust them during your fight camps um and honestly like before i was with this camp i kind of just did my own thing um as far as like game planning went and everything when i had corners or people in my coach like yeah i would listen but i would take it more as a suggestion you know what i mean um I kind of trust my own instinct first. And of course I trust my own instinct first over anyone. But now with these coaches, it's kind of like a video game. You know what I mean? They say a combo, I'm just going to throw it. I trust that they see what I don't see. Um, so it's pretty cool to like have like this new level of like trust uh, in my coaches, you know, all around, whether it's uh, jujitsu or striking. Um, so I feel like I've finally found the perfect little team. And do you think a little bit of that has to do with like, you know, you're maturing into the game and it's like, okay, yeah. I guess I should start trusting my coaches now. Yeah, definitely. You know, there, there definitely are levels to this game, you know, um, and sometimes in order to level up, you have to kind of step out of your comfort zone. You know what I mean? And sometimes that means making changes to your training and your coaches. Um, and, you know, all my coaches have coached very high level people. Um, and, you know, they've also walked the walk themselves, which is really important to me. Uh, so, you know, everything kind of just like went perfect when it came to those coaches. So I saw you, uh, you shared a few videos with TJ Dillashaw. So, I mean, he's yeah. part of that crew as well. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, tell me what that is like to be able to rub shoulders with somebody that's been through it, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's super cool. My gym has a lot of super high level people. Uh, my coach, he works with TJ. He works with Alex Perez. Um, you know what I mean? A lot of people come through. Juan Archuleta comes through every once in a while. Um, you know, and it's just cool to like uh, kind of be side to side, you know, with people who are where I'm trying to be, you know, obviously we're both in the UFCs, but like I said, there are levels. Um, 
And when it's a championship level caliber person versus someone who's trying to be a championship level caliber person, um, it's kind of kind of cool to see. You know what I mean? See all the hard work put in, see the the fight IQ, the the years and years and years of experience. Um, so it's really cool, you know. And they're all really cool too. Like if I have any questions and I ask, like they're more than welcome to help. Sometimes I don't even gotta ask, and they reach out to me and help me. You know what I mean? Um, mm. So not only are they like good athletes, but they're good people too. So it's been really cool. And that, oh man, that's like half the battle, right? It's like, especially, you know, you're a young person going to this new gym and it's like, you only hope that they're not going to be dicks. (laughs) And the fight game is very hit or miss whether people are are nice or not. You know what I mean? Um, And it's not a game. It's like, uh, I've always said, like, I'm not here to make friends, you know what I mean? But when you have a team behind you, like you need people who want to support you and want to see you succeed. Um, and I feel like with the fight game, it's kind of hard, you know what I mean? I feel like I've been with teams before and there's always like underlying jealousy or like underlying like weirdness, you know what I mean? Especially with women, but at, at our gym, it's crazy. Like we have a lot of women and we have a lot of people and like, there's not one person that I feel like secretly wants me to fail. You know what I mean? Like there's no weird stuff. So I feel like your training environment is also like really important in that aspect too. That, I mean, that just, that must feel like a weight off your shoulders to actually yeah. have like solid sparring partners and yeah. you know, um, female to female it's so hard to find a good group of people that you can trust and that you can know that they're going to be good sparring partners do you feel like your game has kind of stepped up a level because you have that nice atmosphere now I mean definitely you know um trusting your training partners and trusting your environment is really important uh you know it's kind of cool because all my training partners like we know like how to work with each other you know what i mean we know how to go hard with each other we know when to be more technical with each other uh we do hard ass rounds but we're not hurting each other you know what i mean and i feel like especially in the fight game it can get uh really competitive in the gym you know what i mean but sometimes that competitiveness can be like malicious you know what i mean or it can turn malicious but i've never had a moment where i've been with any of the guys or girls sparring at that gym and i've had a problem you know what i mean uh so it's, it's pretty cool to like finally find that like peaceful yet like stepping out of my comfort zone all the time kind of environment. Yeah. It's nice to know that you can go hard with somebody. And then at the end of the day, you're like, all right, you want to get some food or something? Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) So I I have to commend you for being so vocal and open about your past struggles. Uh, You recently opened up about a few different things. Um, You know, you suffer from an eating disorder and I know that doesn't really go away. Like we'll probably be dealing with it for a while now. Um, But Talk to me a little bit about how you've been able to get to a better place mentally. Yeah, you know, it's been, I'm not going to lie, like, uh, I've, the reason I'm trying to be so, like, open about talking about it, you know what I mean, is because I know when I was kind of going through it, I don't really hear anyone talking about it. And maybe if someone else would have been talking about it, I would have been more aware of it. I would have caught myself. Because for me, I literally didn't catch, like, didn't see anything wrong with what I was doing until my body started completely quitting. You know what I mean? Um, so for me, I'm just trying to be vocal because I know it's like a very common thing, you know what I mean? In, in and outside of sports, it's very common. Um, so this last year, it's been really difficult. You know what I mean? If anyone's followed my career, they know ever since I was 18, I have fought every other month, you know what I mean? Like 11 fights in a couple years. Like I don't stop fighting or training ever. Um, you know, but I haven't fought in over a year now. Uh, so this whole you know, year has kind of been, it's been really hard for me, you know, uh, fighting and training has always been my outlet, you know, so having that kind of taken away from me for a few months, uh, this past year, and like having to seclude myself away from training, focus on my like mental well being and health, like outside of training and trying to take care of me as a person and not me as like a fighter, you know what I mean? And I feel like that's hard to do. Um, especially when I'm like, I threw myself in the sport when I was 16. And I, I just didn't stop, you know what I mean? Uh, so ever since I was 16, I've, I haven't even really looked at myself as like just a regular person. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm a fighter, I'm an athlete. Um, but it, it's hard because sometimes you need to take a step back and realize like, I am human. I am a woman. You know what I mean? I do have feelings. I do have emotions and, uh, you know, everyone has stuff they've been through and trauma, but it's like, sometimes you need to take a step back and address the root. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's so true. You, you hit the nail on the head with nobody talks about this, right? Like no, they don't. The, I mean, so I many, like, like, especially yeah. in the fight game, you know, yeah. like everybody's cutting weight, everybody's yeah. dealing with, you know, body dysmorphia or how they feel and how they look. Yeah. What would you say to, you know, any up and coming fighter that may be struggling now? Like what kind of advice would you give them? 
I think the reason people don't talk about it is because as a fighter, you think you have to be this like superhero person, you know what I mean? And like, not even human, like you have to be this like unhuman, like no emotions, no issues. Like you have to come off as tough, tough all the time, you know? Um, but if I could give any advice to any up and coming fighters, it's like, stay true to who you are. You know what I mean? Like you are a person, you are a human and you are given a platform. So if you do have struggles and you do want to talk about them, like you are more than welcome to do that. Talking about your struggles or admitting you've like have problems does not affect how good you fight in the cage. You know what I mean? Um, and I feel like that's something that a lot of people like, like to me, I don't care how people perceive this. Like if they, if my opponent watches this and is like, wow, okay, she's mentally weak. That's fine with me. Cause I'm still going to go in there and I'm going to fight and I'm where I need to be mentally. You know what I mean? And I think people think too much about how people are going to perceive what they're saying instead of just saying it because they want to say it. You know what I mean? I think it's a, it's an image thing, especially with social media, you know, like people only post about the good in their life. You know what I mean? And it's like, it's not always good. You have bad training days. You have bad regular days. You know what I mean? You slip into funk sometimes. Sometimes they're bad weeks. Like it is what it is. And it's, it's human, you know? So I, I think a lot of people and fighters, especially they think they can't be like human, you know what I mean? And talk about these things. It's definitely a hard balance because, you know, yeah. when, when you put media into it, right, they want to yeah. portray the fighters as these like gladiators that don't have feelings. And it's like, no, bro, we do. Uh, yeah. So I commend you for yeah. speaking out about it and hopefully, you know, helping anybody that might be coming up and might just need a little assistance. You know, it's, it's nice to hear that you have feelings, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so tell me a little bit about how you got into MMA I mean 16 is pretty young yeah um I mean the simple answer is literally like I watched Ronda Rousey and I wanted to do that you know I don't know what it was about it um but I played competitive softball forever I was planning on going to college you know playing softball in college and I saw Ronda Rousey fight and I literally started training and less than a month later I had quit softball I had dropped out of high school like I was all in like I don't know what it was but I just I saw it before I even did it. I just saw it and I trusted it. And I knew like, this is what I want to do. Um, so for me, like, there's no like super cool kind of like answer. It's literally, I just saw Rhonda and I was like, okay, I, I got to do this. You know what I mean? And uh, she tweeted at you right after one of your fights debut. Yeah. That was, that was pretty cool. <laughs> Were you just like, this can't be real. Yeah. I mean, so for me, everything was going on so fast. You know what I mean? I, so I won and then I went back and I did media and then in between media, Megan Olivier like showed me the tweet and I was like, wait, I, it was like so hard for me to register. And it wasn't until like, you know, like every, all the like commotion kind of calmed down that I was like, oh shit, like the, like she's the reason I started. So for her, like on my debut, nonetheless, to kind of tweet at me, it was kind of cool. It was like, kind of like a, you know, walking in the footsteps type of thing. Yeah. It kind of all just came full circle. It's like, yes, this is like meant to happen. That's exactly. so cool. Uh, so you will be making that walk to the cage very soon. You must be so pumped. We're going to see you January 22nd. Tell me where your head's at right now. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm super excited. Um, it's amazing, you know, having my body uh, fully like nourished. You know what I mean? Um, I'm eating four or five meals a day. You know what I mean? My, my weight's dropping. I'm walking around. I'm only 10 pounds off right now. Um, and that's eating as much as I want to eat. Like I'm not restricting at all. I'm hoping to not have to restrict. Um, you know, my body's kind of been through a lot with my metabolism and everything this past year. So I'm trying to just focus on my skill set and everything and let everything balance out. And so far it's been great. I feel sharp. I feel strong. I feel explosive. Um, it's kind of crazy. Like the difference, how I feel now than how I felt my whole career, you know what I mean? Uh, so it, it's pretty cool. Cause I just see it all kind of coming together when I, when like last year, if you would ask me like six, seven months ago, if I would have thought I would be fighting or like as soon as I was, I'd be like, there's no way. So it's kind of cool to finally see that light at the end of this tunnel. And uh, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm almost there. So I'm super excited. It's exciting. And people are really starting to, you know, gravitate towards your style and what you bring to the cage. Uh, what are some of your goals going into this fight that you hope that you can execute and show the fans? I mean, honestly, I'm just... Uh, I'm just trying to go in there and like get back into it. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, I, I obviously I have like general game plans every fight, but for me, I just try to go in there and do what I'm best at. You know what I mean? Whether I'm feeling better on the feet, that whole camp, or whether I'm feeling better on the ground, that whole camp. Um, I try to just kind of let my body, you know what I mean? Do what it wants to do. I kind of read the moment. And uh, for me, I'm just excited. Like this will be my first uh, arena fight, non-COVID arena fight. So I'm looking forward to that experience. For me, it's almost like, 
a debut in a sense. You know what I mean? I know it's in my hometown. So a lot of my friends and family are coming. So I'm super stoked about oh, that. Oh, that is awesome. I didn't realize that. Me, I'm just kind of like, I'm looking forward to getting back in there and getting back to, you know what I mean? Climbing the ranks and, and trying to show people that like who I am. So that doesn't give you any more added pressure knowing that your friends and family are going to be there. I mean, it does a little bit, but, uh, you know, a good is, pressure, I guess. Yeah. But yeah. It, it's like, this is like your whole career. This is what you want. You want to fight in your hometown in the UFC, um, on a stacked pay-per-view card. You know what I mean? So for me, it's like, of course it adds a little more pressure, especially when like every day I have a new person saying, Oh, I bought my tickets. I bought my tickets. And it's like, I'm super excited. Of course it adds pressure. And of course it adds anxiety, but it's like, what's not going to do that in a fight camp. You know what I mean? Uh, luckily I've been doing this for a while so I know how to turn that kind of stuff into good uh you know feelings so uh I'm just trying to channel everything and kind of taking the moment taking uh the good feelings the bad feelings like it's all part of the experience so I'm just I'm super excited just to be back in there yeah and you know the fans are certainly going to be excited to see you get back in there as well uh before I let you go I have to say uh when you're not in the cage you're a dog mom right yeah saw a picture of your Frenchie and I'm absolutely obsessed yeah how how many do you have so i have three i actually just got an english bulldog puppy Ugh. last week um so i have three i have two frenchies and one english bulldog and there's like they're like one year old six months old and three months old so i have <laughs> puppies so i'm done for a while but uh yeah i have three dogs <laughs> that's awesome i just i had to say i love french bulldogs i was like this girl gets it she's got a lot of dogs it's cool uh so before I go, let you go, anything you want to say about your upcoming opponent or what the fans can expect January 22nd? I mean, she's making her debut. Um, you know, I'm coming back off a long layoff. So, I mean, we're both going to be eager. You know what I mean? So it's going to be an exciting fight. It's going to be uh, an action-packed fight. So, I mean, I think it's a good fight. You should tune in and watch it. Well, we definitely will. Thank you so much, Kay Hansen, and we will see you very soon in that cage. Thank you.